came into being. So I wanted to mention again that what's really unique about this project When in the future anybody decides to buy Zen on Uniswap or SushiSwap or whatever pancake swap, they will be uh, they will be resting assured that they're buying it not from some founder, not from some allocation, but literally from another person or a group of people that were part of the community that actually minted Zen and now they're putting it up for sale. So that's very unique and interesting, and it actually makes Zen more valuable because you know that. There isn't some dev that hit a return key and brought up a quadrillion uh, uh, coins or crypto out of nowhere and then desperately trying to do something with it, like a burn or or give it to Vitalik, whatever, right? I mean, there's all right. kinds of little tricks to do marketing. The problem mm -hmm. with that approach is that there isn't a community when you when you hit a return key and you, and you generate a trillion of useless tokens. That's what they are, just numbers in the blockchain. Now, I truly believe that the real value comes from the community itself and from the people. So the collective will of the community is encoded in this token creation. Here, here's one idea. So let, let's say that you're, you're not minting Zen, you're just waiting to buy it. And you have 1,000 people minting Zen for 10 days and they exit, they create Zen after 10 days. And, and this whole group, this 1,000 people, they put it on Uniswap in a liquidity pool or they just put a limit order in to sell it. As an investor or a participant in Zen Crypto, you can come as a buyer and you can literally buy 1,000 times 10 or 10,000 days. So rather than waiting 10,000 days or using multiple wallets, you can just buy it on the Uniswap instantly. And right. you would have bought the, the future creation of Zen technically, because that's what right. it means. Right. So, so you... So you're buying future value of Zen, except you're locking in the rate of what the market is giving it to you at this point. So here's what I'm thinking. In terms of value creation, gas prices are really low right now. I mean, we, we looked at it before and it looks like it's 10, 10 guay right now, right? But we have seen it 50, 75, 100, 200. So whenever the gas prices spike, it actually makes Zen more valuable because less people can mint it. Or if they mint it, they have to pay more in gas. The gas goes to validators and it actually helps Ethereum. Half of it gets burned, so Ethereum supply gets lower. That's good for the Ethereum investors. And the other half goes to validators to, to validate transactions, which is also good. Now, what it, what it does to the value of Zen, if you see a spike in the gas price, maybe it actually makes sense to go to Uniswap and see what it's selling for. Because you can have an arbitrage between the higher gas prices versus the uh, buying it on Uniswap cheaper from someone who actually paid less. So somebody who paid $10 or $5 or $2 to generate a million Zen, now it would cost them, let's say, $100. Mm -hmm. And um, that person can benefit from Uniswap selling it at 200 or maybe 300 Because remember, anything that you can buy instantly without waiting, let's say, 1,000 days or 10,000 days, has more value than the value of gas itself. But gas is definitely right. a component. So the value of Zen, I would say the formula will look something like this. It's the cost of gas, mm -hmm. uh, then estimated cost of gas in the future, mm. multiplied by the factor that represents community growth. Because the bigger the community, the more Zen gets minted and the more adoption right. it has. Therefore, there's actually more liquidity and more uh, uh, marketing in the world. Like imagine if Zen has 50 million people interacting with it. It's going to spread very quickly to the rest of the to the rest of the world because the world will will understand that uh, getting into this is actually important right now because we do have um, this uh, sort of difficulty increasing every day. And by the way, so a lot of people say, "Hey, Zen has no cap, therefore it can't be valuable." The reality is that it does have a cap. But this cap is the rate of Zen's creation every day. So every day, Zen's creation is diminished by 0.03%. And then by, by, the, by, the, by, by, by the year four, you would be making 50% less Zen per day than you otherwise would be making if you started today or when we launch. By the time we hit right. eight years, 
you're making almost nothing. You're going to be making less than 0.00001% of the Zen supply, even even smaller amount. So wow. the cap is, it's not a cap where there is a limited number of Zen crypto tokens that are coming out, but rather the rate. Now, the again, the value in dollars is the difference between the participants as they come and the total emissions of Zen per day. So imagine participants are increasing by 20% every month, mm -hmm. but the emission rate is dropping. And so the difference between this and that actually creates the value. And I have okay. it on faircrypto.org. Can... And so here's what we see. So the, there is the world's inflation, which is actually how many dollars get printed. And when I say mm -hmm. dollars, I mean all fiat currencies. And then there's the crypto inflation. Now, crypto inflation is Zen's uh, disinflationary curve. Disinflationary means that it continues to reduce the total number of tokens that's created every day. Now, the green line, the vertical line, inflation differential is where the value is in dollars or in fiat. So what's happening is that that green line, you can see there's three examples of them. There's one in the beginning, one in the middle, mm -hmm. and one at the end. And you see how rapidly they're increasing mm -hmm. in, in, vertical, in vertical height? Mm -hmm. That's actually is the inflation differential or how any cryptocurrency such as Zen can increase in the fiat representation.